A lot of changes. If you think the vocal things in Wolfhard was a big change, there's a lot bigger, bigger thing happening with the with Before the Dawn. Hello, you Metal Pilgrims, and welcome to the new interview episode on MP2 by Metal Pilgrim with a person who I'm always happy to see on any of our channels, Mr. Thomas Salkinen of Wolfhard. Thomas, how's it going, man? It's going well. It's going well. Good times. Yeah, that's good. Good to hear, man. Uh, it's been a while. When was the last time we spoke on the channel? It was a, a year and a half ago or something like that, right? Yeah, I think it was the, the Skull Soldier EP, yes. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. so it's been a while, man. Hope all is well amidst this crazy times. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, as, as well as it can. It's uh, It didn't get any easier after the pandemic. <laughs> so yeah. it's... Uh, and I think it's going to be the whole next, like, next, like, following 12 months is going to be very, like, uh, complicated times uh, globally even. But, uh, yeah, again, I'm Ukrainian. I think, yeah, I, <laughs> you know, you, you know the most about it. Yeah, I don't need to tell you. Unfortunately, unfortunately, but uh, fingers crossed. I, I, I do, you know, I do believe in best. So hopefully, hopefully we'll be back to just making metal worrylessly very, very yeah. soon, man. Very, very soon. All right, man. So, I mean, obviously, the big news about Wolfheart is the upcoming release of your new studio album, The King of the North. First of all, congrats. Amidst this crazy time to finish a uh, full-length album is already an achievement, <laughs> I have to say. Yeah. But um, can you just take us back to when you actually started writing, you know, for it? And uh, tell us a bit about the creative process behind it and, uh, you know, and the whole idea of what you, you guys kind of put into this new record. Uh, well, I had the idea already when I was uh, finishing the Wolves of Karelia. Mm -hmm. I really wanted to go more into like these uh, Nordic topics, and uh, and writing the theme album about the Winter War like really like excited me about the idea of doing more theme albums. Mm -hmm. I'd never done those before, and uh, then I was just already like thinking of topics, and the Finnish mythology was pretty clear winner. So I this this time I had a lot more like uh, time and thoughts behind the theme and also the writing process was different. There was no chores mm -hmm. to interfere with the writing process. So I never kind of like stopped being on the studio mode. Uh, mm -hmm. The after the Wolf of Karelia came already like the the EP and uh, between the EP there was two Dawn of Solis albums and then I went back to like it was constantly in the writing mode. Mm -hmm. Which, which actually was really like good for this Wolfhard album because it's sometimes hard to get back to the same focus when you go on tour. You tour for weeks, then you come home. It takes one or two weeks to adjust to so being home. And you don't really want to even touch the guitar after a tour because that's only what you've been doing. So now it was a, it was a different level of focus mm -hmm. on, on making of the album. That's that's really interesting. And I... And of course, I was able to listen to it already. And uh, in my personal opinion, just running a little bit ahead of myself here, but I, I think this is the strongest album you've you've put out to date. Seriously, I, 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 I do agree. But of course, me agreeing is a different, different thing because <laughs> I, I don't think any any songwriter would disagree on that kind of comments <laughs> when there's a new album coming out. But also, the, the the process of making the album was different. We we never spent this much of time for the pre production. We mm -hmm. We used to like uh, do a lot of a lot of the job separately. There was only like uh, max two guys at the studio at the same time. Now we went to the cabin in the middle of the forest in Finland, spent there for a few weeks. Mm -hmm. The the whole band except the drummer just living there together. Nobody was going to work. Nobody was having other plans. It was just like a like different level of focus and and concentration on the album. And I think that is the the reason why it is hopefully after years, it's going to be seen as the best Wolfhard album until the next one until comes out. Until the next out. one, of course. It does show that. It does show that. It shows that it's a very well thought through album, I, I, I gotta say, right? The opening track, Sky Forger, for a moment, just put me in a trance. I, I'll be honest with you. I even had to double check if I've, you know, put Wolfhard on or was it something, something else for a while. But then this this dynamics just it just started growing, picking it up, and then kept me on my toes until the very end. So, in a, in a way, you know, I I enjoyed listening to it throughout. You know, this is one of those albums which I would like to put on, 
opening with Skyforger and ending with the last track. This is this is the hundred percent. And speaking about that Skyforger intro, which by the way is the longest track on the record, right? And it's a slightly a deviation from the overall mood of the album because it is an opener. What yeah. did you guys were trying to put into it, and uh, how did that track come out? Because uh, it's 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 a very interesting opener for a Wolfheart album. Yeah, it's uh, it's exactly the opposite that I was told to do. I, I did the same with Everlasting <laughs> Fall, which one of which still remains as the longest opener in our history. Is uh, of course, of course, the label would like to see the opening track to be somewhere around okay. four minutes. The first chorus should come in first minute. It would be very good for the Spotify algorithms. <laughs> and now it takes three minutes to hear the first vocals. But uh, I really wanted to have like a like a big opener track that also like uh, shows the different sides of the album. And uh, theme wise, also all the other songs are more focused on mm -hmm. different stories and uh, like a portions of the mythology skyforger is the biggest like a compilation it, it tells about the creation of the nordic realm like the demigods forged in the skies and then how the the nordic realm is structured with the underworld and and gate to the north being the the northern light so i needed to introduce the album musically and also theme wise so that mm -hmm. kind of like makes the song grew bigger than it would be ideal at least for the music business but uh, this is and you started speaking about this is your new concept album right uh what was this research for this like and how did you come up with the idea of going into the you know the mythology of old why did, did this arise after after a very historic album by you well ba basically because I, that was the historic album and that's where finnish history like the documented history ends. We, we are a very young country. There is not much like uh, big things happening before the mm -hmm. First and Second World War, except when you go into the Nordic mythology. So there is, there's not much steps in between. Mm -hmm. So that was the only direction, like going to way deeper in the rabbit hole in the whole history. Mm -hmm. The research was, was quite complicated because it's not well documented. It's not like Norwegian mythology where even if you don't know how to read, you've seen some episodes of the Vikings, and you know <laughs> yeah, that there is Valhalla. You know that there is, you know the basic structures and uh, ideas of the of the Vikings and, the, and their like uh, religions and pagan stuff. But Finnish mythology is just like uh, scattered stories that was mm -hmm. were told by the old women in the village, and uh, it's it's we didn't have like uh, skills of writing until the Christianity came to Finland from Sweden, and when they arrived uh they banned all the writings of the pagan stuff so that made it even more impossible to have a uh, the whole thing well documented a lot of the stuff is just small bits of stories or poems or parts of songs so it's it, it it took a lot of work it wasn't just that you buy a book and you start reading and then there's the stories and you just make your interpretation of the story it's just uh it's a full-scale research but that made it very interesting also some of I, I i learned that some of the poems and some of the stories like this uh big bedrocks that used to be like uh, worship as a uh, place for certain mm -hmm. gods was actually around where i was born in the Karelian area yes nice. that i was not aware because it's just in one like verse of an old song that is mentioned the certain lake that has that rock mm -hmm. in the in the in some islands and so it says yeah it's very, very inspiring, very interesting, but also took a lot of time to build up the stories. That's really interesting. And just by you speaking about this, it's very interesting to see how the Finnish story and mythology, the whole idea of mythology and uh, everything is very much related to Ukrainian one, because just uh, replace Finland by Ukraine and you, I could say exactly the same thing about yeah. <laughs> hours before. But Matt, going back to the music of the album, on this album, you're also given new vocal spotlights, right, to Lauri and Vagelis. Um, yeah. I thought that they fit very well, man. How did this idea arise? What did you want? Why even did you decide to to go for it? And uh, you know, and uh, is this the new uh, Wolf Heart kind of structure we will see in the future? Definitely, is the structure we're gonna see in the future. And uh, Lauri has been kind of like sneaking in slowly already. Like we did this, the, the acoustic single when we were still uh, in Spine Farm, like years and years ago. He's mm -hmm. been doing, he has, has had a like, big role in certain choruses like Breakwater, 
uh, zero gravity, like big songs that has his like uh, melodic shouting or voice already in there. So he's been like uh, just building up his like uh, place as as a vocalist. But uh, when Vagelis joined the band, I was very familiar of his vocal skills. Mm -hmm. But he joined the band right at the time when the Rules of Karelia was already written. Mm -hmm. And we were already like preparing for the recording. So at that point, he could only participate as a solo guitar player. But w when writing this album, knowing the skills of both vocalists, I could already, uh, while writing the songs, could like uh, write the certain parts for them to sing, not to have the song ready and then think where could I fit some lines for each guy. But uh, each place for the where the guys sing is actually written for them. And I think that makes them fit a lot better into our music, even though it's a very new element to put like clean vocals in the band that has been doing only growling vocals in the past. I think clean vocals for a band like Wolfheart overall in the genre is a very, you know, brave decision because it can be a hit or miss, right? And as exactly, I, yeah. As I said, I enjoyed it a lot on this one, but did you embrace uh, for a possible backlash by the fans? Yeah. Yeah, and we did a lot of work. Like uh, when we got the album done, I was very confident that this it will go well. Mm -hmm. Of course, there's always going to be people. It's like matter of taste. It's, you're never going to please everybody. That you you lose some fans in this kind of decision, and then you if you do it well enough, you gain more. Mm -hmm. That's just how the balance is. But uh, when we started recordings, I was lot I was a lot more like uncertain because bands that are doing this kind of like a. Uh, Nordic metal with the different lot of vocals are bands like Borgnakar. Mm -hmm. They have the former guy of uh, Dimo Borgir doing the clean vocals. And the, the keyboard player is just phenomenal. And the, the, the biggest song has even the, the guy from Ulver. Yeah. Yeah. So that is the level where we, we are new that we need to reach to, to be good enough. So it wasn't just that the, the guys do their best, but the, the level that we were aiming was was really high so of course and the, in the studio you you have way too much time to second guess and you hear things differently so you get a little bit paranoid you just is you you don't start hearing the like the final result you hear it building layer mm. by layer until the final mix so it's uh it's very different from me listening to the final version already yeah you're getting yeah. used to it and it's like a vaccine you're getting doses by doses a little yeah bit. exactly yeah but up uh, out of the um, comments I've read so far online, I think that most Wolfheart fans received it v with open arms, at least yeah. from what I saw, and uh, which is a great thing. And now with this new structure, how did you guys divide responsibilities? Did you remain still the main songwriter, or did you guys, you know, kind of divide the responsibilities for writing this new record? Uh, I still write all the music and uh, a big part of the clean vocal arrangements and uh, production was in the hands of the sound engineer Saku. Mm -hmm. Saku did the mixing of both new Dawn of Solis albums. Mm -hmm. And this is the first Wolfhard album that he's mixing. So that was like the biggest change in the production, but he is insanely good working with the clean vocals, harmonies and arrangements that he does already with Mikko, with Dawn of Solis. So he, he also had a big role, but he we've been doing albums together with him since like a, like 12 years already. Mm -hmm. So he also knows my songwriting really well. So he the way he was producing the vocals, but not just adding another layer, but he was also like uh, working the vocals to fit Wolfheart sound. So. Since you are still the main uh, music writer, where did you personally dig for inspirations for this one because this album and this is just a view from the outsider of course does fit very well into the overall Wolfheart discography it does it definitely feels like a Wolfheart album by the end of the day but you did introduce some new tricks basically to the genre right and uh, which were very pleasantly surprising for me personally so where did you dig for inspiration for those well th this is going to sound very like this would be my opportunity to take the role of a great artist and, and, and great mind and then but it's so much more simple and and like like a boring i just what i love the most is just sit down on the sofa take acoustic guitar and have an Im image in my head of this some kind of like landscape or kind of like movie poster in my head and i just start doodling with the guitar and coming up with ideas that's that's all it needs i don't need any bigger inspiration 
I just need five minutes in a corner of a sofa with the guitar. And it, when I get the first idea, it, it can be just sometimes it's just a part of the melody. Mm -hmm. And in my head, it starts to build automatically as a bigger. I start hearing the drums and then the bass uh, works together with the bass drum. And then on top of the bass, I want the guitar. Sometimes I have the rhythms of the riffs in my head, mm -hmm. the accents that support the drums. And then I write the riff on, on, on top of those accents. But it's just, the whole thing just begins it's so simple and so kind of like boring. It's not a, it's not a great story, <laughs> but that's where all the songs come from. I just sit somewhere with the acoustic guitar and uh, then there's a song. Like this, uh, it's, it's different band. I know we are talking about Wolfheart, but the same method is very well underlined in the in the latest uh, Dawn of Solis album. Mm -hmm. I booked a cabin in in uh, beside a lake in finland completely off the grid i i had to bring like a more small like a, what is the word uh, the thing that you run with the diesel engine to get electricity a generator. generator i thought there has to be a design <laughs> name for that so has to be able to charge my laptop and my cell phone but i was so off the grid as i could i was just sitting on the pier beside the lake and i wrote the whole album in one week mm -hmm. it's a just the same. I just sit down and start doing something with the guitar. And when I click the first idea in my head, it just builds into a song. So, Speaking about your other projects, uh, what new is coming up? I saw some big news on the <laughs> on the internet, man. This is, this is a good good day for that question. Uh, <laughs> just, like, um, just like a few hours before this interview, is uh, we released the first new single of uh, Before the Dawn. Yeah, and I announced like full comeback, announced new lineup. Uh, the album is already in the making. Uh, I recorded the drums already. I'm gonna go to the studio in two days to do the rhythm guitar. Mm -hmm. So we are very like uh, in a, in a strong process to making the album, and it's gonna come out in next uh, next year June, early June. And there's festivals being booked. So it's, that train is already like. Uh, strongly moving ahead there's a lot of like cool plans coming we of course we don't know what the world is going to be next summer I, I at least i enjoy the opportunity to plan things because that wasn't the case <laughs> for the past two years you cool. didn't have any plans and, and at least i have the th things happening in my head that will bring stuff like forward in my mind because i think that is very important for every musician but uh yeah. there's there's a there's a strong comeback coming from that band but a lot of changes. If you think the vocal things in Wolfheart was a big change, there's a lot bigger, bigger thing <laughs> happening with the with Before the Dawn. That's awesome. Great to hear, and I'm very excited to see where you guys will take that. Uh, honestly, I of course I saw the news. That's why <laughs> I'm asking. I, uh, we are friends on Facebook, so that's a good thing. And um, on behalf of all Ukrainians, uh, you know that we will be very happy to welcome you back in Kiev. Uh, you know. We have a little problem going on right now in Ukraine. Yeah, I, yeah, I get that. Yeah, yeah. but <laughs> as soon as it's possible, I would, I would love to return as soon as possible. Yeah, absolutely, man, absolutely, man. You know, I can be talking forever, uh, literally, uh, all night long. But I don't, I don't want to keep you here for too long. So, man, thank you so much for your time. It was a pleasure as always. Any last message for the fans, both of uh, of of either of your projects, I guess, uh, both uh, worldwide and in Ukraine would love to give you the floor keep keep your ears open there's a lot of new music coming from a lot of directions that was <laughs> not supposed to happen in one decision 2013 which i fucked up completely and now it's it's your burden because there's gonna be a lot of music coming out that's almost thomas uh, that's great thomas is the mastermind of many many projects and uh, i think uh, man you are taking your well well deserved uh, spot in the in the genre right now which i'm very happy to see and see how it will be unfolding uh, in the future guys as always a uh, reminder wolf hearts uh wolf Hearts new studio album the king of the north is going to be out in just a couple of weeks so make sure to check it out not miss it uh it is a great record as i said and i will definitely vouch for you enjoying it so make sure to not miss it Thomas Hogan and everyone, thank you so much, man. As always, a pleasure. Keep rocking. Thank you. Thank you, man.